some of you uh, may have seen from one of my previous videos I'd uh, mentioned that I was swapping the Harley buying something else well here it is Triumph Scrambler in cosmic yellow I have a thing about yellow bikes so we're gonna go for a bit of a ride and uh, give you some assessment probably not going to do a lot of commentary I'm getting used to the bike but also I want to try out a different position for the microphone that's part of today's exercise so just going to go for a short spin round have a, a relocation of the microphone but uh, get an impression of the bike I've already done about 95 miles on it so uh, I'm enjoying it already but uh, yeah we'll take it and do a few more just filled up so uh, Let's crack on. Okay. <laughs> Try and get comfy. Helmet sorted. And uh, steady ride. I'm not sure which way I'm going to go because uh, there's some showers drifting in. Weather's not uh, as good today as it has been for the last few days. So it's going to be a uh, Bit of a suck it and see ride, possibly. I was going to go West Yorkshire way, but that looks like where the worst of the weather is. But we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Right. Oh. Okay. So I've just filled up. Um, obviously, the fuel gauge doesn't. Uh, <laughs> register the fill up straight away it was still showing that we were nearly empty so uh, yeah it's coming back it's uh, quite an awkward fill I will say on it on the tank if you don't get the uh, nozzle in it uh, sprays back on you as I've just found out and it's difficult it's very difficult to see how much you're getting in but uh, well yeah anyway reset the trip right you've got options on the um, instrument panel so you can you can set it so you've got a digital readout of your revs or the time or your uh, your trip your MPG, how much fuel you've got remaining. I've just set it onto the um, to read the revs out for me. It's uh, quite a heavy motor, but um, all the torque is at the bottom end, so you don't have to rev it out. I've got the microphone inside my helmet. Hopefully, it's not too loud, but also hopefully it's masking it more from the engine noise on previous videos you're getting a lot of engine noise and uh, not very complimentary sometimes because of the way the microphone works you, you don't get a true sound from the engines um, but it's, uh, as much as it has been picking up my voice it's probably not been picking it up as clearly as you would hope so having it inside my helmet I'm trying my best not to shout but we'll see how it goes. So, I'm thinking of heading out towards Darton and doing a couple of the back roads um, out that way to start with, just to see how it goes. I say, I'm not, I'm not going to give you a blow by blow commentary on this ride. I was having some of my last ones, so it's, it's just going to be pertinent points more about the bike than anything else. Um, I mean, initial observations, which I will give you now while we're uh, getting out of uh, the built up areas. I was also a bit wary that the bike was going to be too high. The reality is, it's not much higher than uh, my Ducati Scrambler. I can get one foot flat on the floor very easily or both balls on my feet. Um, probably the biggest difference I've noticed between this and the Scrambler is centre of gravity. This is, tends to be more top heavy. Uh, so you've just got to be a little bit 
aware of that I suppose but uh, other than that seating position is a lot more comfortable than um, the Harley was which uh, again was one of the main reasons for swapping was the comfort factor on the Harley um, and it is more comfortable than the, the Ducati as well the Ducati is um, fairly hunched up head down riding position not a sports bike by any stretch of the imagination but it's a smaller bike and even though I'm not very tall I feel it and I'm more cramped in my knees hips uh, and shoulders on the Ducati but the sort of riding I do at it it's not a major problem <laughs> well I'm hoping to do a few longer trips on this I'm hoping to use this bike for longer trips um, I don't mind the naked bike I've ridden naked bikes all my life so I don't mind it being naked I might put a bit of a fly screen on but more from the point of view of it being a cosmetic upgrade I like the look of them rather than the wind resistance it'll give me um, I suppose one of the short one of the advantages of being a short rider is the instrument nasal on most bikes gives me a little bit of protection anyway and uh, unless I'm going to be trying to do 70 plus miles an hour on the motorway for hour after hour it isn't going to be a problem I don't think never has been on my other bikes so um, say the most I've ever had is a nose fairing on my bikes so all the controls everything I mean, it's a new bike so the gear change is a little bit clunky but nowhere near as clunky as the Harley was and riding Triumphs 20 odd years ago when they were first coming out the gearboxes were a lot worse than this one for clunkiness so seating position as I've just said is good and uh, all the instruments everything fall easy to hand single disc front and rear so far the braking has been more than adequate um, for the couple of rides I've done. See how far we can get before these clouds start to uh, dump on us. I have to get used to the fact that it's a, an analog speedo and a digital rev counter which is the direct opposite to what the Harley had. So I'm looking at the, uh, the speedo at the moment and thinking it's revs and looking down at the revs trying to work out the speed. I'm sure I'll, uh, I'll get into it very quickly. So can't give you any indication on the accuracy of the speedo so far. Um, okay, bit of a, uh, a old block. Not a good place to break it down. If he has broken down, he might just be lost. So we're pulling up here easily, 2,000, yeah, 2,400 RPM, 50 mile an hour in fourth gear into fifth. Yeah, just nudging 50 as we come up there. No problem at all. If we'd have come through without the having to slow down for the broken down truck, might have pulled up in fifth, but. Again, with modern bikes, I find that um, it's about using the gears these days, not about getting it in top and leaving it there as it used to be in the old days and slugging it out. Modern bikes, even big twins like this, even on the Harley, use your gears. So you get a more rewarding ride. Okay, out into the countryside. One thing I've not mentioned, the bike comes standard on Metzler Tourants and so far they've actually been very good. I mean the brand new tyres and uh, the roads that they've been used on so far have been reasonably good. Um, no major intention of trying to take it off-road and they are a, a 
dual purpose tyre with a very high road bias shall we say so um, but no it's worth mentioning um, I know people that I've spoken to in the past have always rated the uh, Metzler Turans but uh, so far yeah they've been okay we'll, we'll see how uh, many miles we get out of them but they've been uh, for the first 100 miles or so they've been excellent roads like this it is a big lazy motor it, it, it's it likes to go along I mean at the minute I'm in third gear uh, doing between 30 and 40 mile an hour down this back lane um, you don't know it, it's now a road there are farms down it there's a horse stable coming up so you're not going to go racing down it but the bike's just happy plodding along really See there. Ah, Jesus. Tree branch. I was watching the cow bed because I thought he was starting to reverse onto the road and there's a tree hanging into the road. Brilliant. Okay. And there I'm into fourth gear. And again, 40 mile an hour, fourth gear. 2,200, 2,000 RPM it down, pick it up. It's reasonably happy. If you want it to pick up its heels, it does quite well. Again, it's not a sports bike, that's not what you'd buy one of these for, but uh, more than capable of keeping up with modern traffic within the limits of modern speed limits, so yeah, more than happy with that. And plenty of engine braking as well, coming into the 30 limit there, just went down into, uh, into second gear and yeah, more than enough engine braking. Wow, the resurface of those. Last time we came down here, on uh, probably featured on one of previous videos, you were literally picking your line between the potholes down here. Okay, we'll do a uh, post ride review in a second. Well, there we have it, back from the ride. Only did about 30, 35 miles, something like that. The weather uh, was uh, closing on us, but uh, means we've clocked up about 130 miles total, I suppose, isn't it? We've done just shy of 100 and I've done just over 30. So I've done about 130 miles on it and so far, I can't really find a fault with it. Yeah, one of the criticisms of the bike is the, the heat from the exhaust burning your leg. Um, I'm guessing if you've got longer legs, you can uh, kink your leg around the exhaust if you need to, but you can feel the warmth from the exhaust. It's not burning your leg, and it's probably no more intrusive than the exhaust on the Ducati, which is not visible, but goes close under your right thigh underneath the seat and can get quite warm in warm weather especially at junctions when you put your feet down so 
But no, there you have it. Back in the garage. Okay. So far, more than happy with it. I'll leave it at that. Just to sign off. And as always, I am the Barnsley Biker. For now, I'll see you.